Welcome SEO survivors to celebrate the return of the Pink Devil Land. Sword Online Alternative Gangale Online is finally receiving its long-awaited season 2. I'll talk about what to expect from this new season without spoilers and if there's anyone who wants to read the light novels ahead of the anime as to what you should read, links for the books down in the description. But I imagine most of you are here for the basic information first and foremost. And there isn't much. It's been 5 years since the first season of AGG anime and all we know right now regarding season 2 is that it is happening. Reveal teaser has been shared during the weekend but the teaser did not feature any kind of date or window of release nor did it clarify how many cores aka roughly how many episodes we can expect. Personally I wouldn't expect it to air during the fall anime season if they were aiming for fall we'd have a date and a full blown trailer already. Winter season would still be an optimistic expectation so to say but not entirely out of the question. However I see the spring season of 2024 to be a good opportunity, especially because I expect the anime original Sword Online movie to be sometime late 2024 as well, and AGGO should function as a bridge, as an hype increaser during that wait period, the same way it functioned before Elicization Anime aired. As for how many episodes we can expect, well we can potentially get up to 4 cores, around 50 episodes of a season, the source material is there, spanning from volume 4 to 13, it's pretty much the same exact length as Elicization but that's out of the question, don't, don't expect 4 cores. For starters, those 10 volumes is not a single arc to begin with, it's multiple along with other side story like tangents let's say as well. And in my opinion, more importantly, AGGO is kind of a series where it's better consumed in short bursts due to its slapstick comedy and we should look for a one core season instead. So pretty much the same as season 1, probably around 12 episodes, give or take one episode. The cast is staying the same, well we assume it's staying the same. The main concern to be honest was actually Len's voice actor Kusunoki Tomori due to some health issues a couple years back but the reveal puts that concern to rest as Kusunoki will be reprising her role as the pink devil as well as her real world self, Kohiro Yumaki Karen. And I for one am very glad to have her return. So that leaves the rest that have not yet been confirmed but should be as good as confirmed. Hikasa Yoko as Pito Hui aka Kanzaki Elsa, Okitsuku Kazuyuki as M aka Asogi Goshi, and Akasaki Chinatsu as Fukajiro aka my love Shinohara Miyu. And hopefully Reona can return as Kanzaki Elsa's singing voice again. After all, her professional career truly kicked off with the multiple albums she did with AGGO's first season. With all the basic information out of the way, what can you actually expect from Alternative GGO season 2? Well, the safest expectation of course is what comes next, the entirety of the third Squad Jam tournament. Very similar to the second SJ, the third one also spans two volumes, so SAO AGGO volumes 4 and 5. The arc is of course aptly titled Third Squad Jam, but as six of them prefers having entire sentences as book titles, the title also includes Betrayer's Choice. And if you want to stay ahead of the anime adaptation, that is where you jump in now with volume 4 of the light novels, not manga, links in the description, continue with 5 to complete that arc. And going back to that title, Betrayer's Choice, that should immediately give you a good idea about what to expect in terms of dynamics. A lot of double crossings, a lot, and I mean that, it's a squad jam with a lot of twists and turns, trust me. Especially the second half of this arc, the volume 5 portion, is generally considered to be the best content that Alternative Gangale Online has to offer, so definitely look forward to that. For the first time, we'll be having the team LPFM as one squad entering the tournament, but this is the one squad jam where things are a bit more complicated than usual. After all, you know, it's not just us, the viewers, who would find it quite formulaic and predictable if the same teams kept entering the tournament and steamrolled everyone else until there's a climactic finale. What a coincidence that the in-universe sponsor of the tournament has thought the same thing. So they cooked up a special, quite the unpredictable squad jam for us all, which, ironically, will backfire due to the even more unpredictable and untrustworthy participants themselves. 
themselves. The teams, or at the very least, faces that you'll recognize from the previous season, the return of course, Len still has an unfulfilled promise to boss, also known as Eva from Team Shink. On the other side, MMTM led by David, David, I really wanna say, has his work cut out for him as he is on the path for revenge against Pito Hui for what happened in the second squad jam as he was killed by what he then deemed as just a toy. Ouch, you, you can believe that left a mark in him psychologically. We have the utter maniacs, Zemal, also known as All Japan Machine Gun Lovers, reprising their appearance in the third squad jam too and... <laughs> well, well, I don't even remember whether they were plot relevant to the third jam or not, but goddamn, I do remember how hilarious and genuinely stupid fun their appearances were, so look forward to them. Shirley and Clarence as individuals, together they'll have by far one of the most epic moments of the entire arc. Ah, and, and of course, how can we forget the former champions Team TS who won the second squad jam using the ultimate battle royale tactic of not engaging in combat at all and hiding until everyone else kills each other, they want to prove that their tactical win was not a fluke. They will be working to utilize another big brain battle royale tactic for y'all to marvel at. And I will warn you once more, while AGGO is known for its, let's say, out of the box thinking for its story beats, the third squad jam is just true chaos all around. More double crossings than your typical James Bond movie, more trap card activations than your typical Yu-Gi-Oh episode. And while that's the kind of carnage and chaos you can expect from the third squad jam as an arc, I still think in a one core series, we may just get a third volume adapted and that is volume 6. It's more of a standalone story called One Summer Day, it's, it's not a squad jam but rather a new game mode being tested. So I can easily see them having the high stakes, extremely volatile shitpost that is squad jam 3 for like 8 to 9 episodes and then a quick entry into volume 6 with a more low stakes and chill kind of a shitpost. And yes, I know, I know, I always cry about how the Sword Online anime needs more episodes to be a solid adaptation and how Alization was butchered with 4 episodes per volume pacing, but AGGO, it's a completely different narrative. It has a type of storytelling where I believe a more compact and fast paced adaptation fits it a lot more. I am going to say this as I promote the books with my affiliate links, but the slapstick nature of AGGO, it just fits an animated medium a lot more than it does a written medium. And of course, the, the strongest weapon slapstick comedy has is that fast-paced nature of its jokes, where jokes can feature a lot of hit or miss stuff, but the rapid pace the jokes are arriving at, it makes up for it, never giving you a dull moment. And that's why I believe when adapting something like AGGO, you can not only get away with adapting 4 episodes per volume, but actually benefit greatly from it. Think of it like a Looney Tunes sketch. In fact, back-to-back -back sketches is exactly how I described scenes in AGGO when I was reading volumes 4 and 5. Imagine watching a scene where funny things and reactions are happening back to back to back to back and then imagine reading funny stuff happening a lot but with a lot of exposition, technicalities, fluff, etc happening in between them. That's, that's kind of the situation with AGGO when it comes to light novels. As the audience, you know, I'll, I'll give an example on the technical side, I don't necessarily need to know the exact specifics of a given gun, how it's affected by wind, how heavy its rounds are, what kind of a sound it makes when reloading, how hot its muzzle can get, etc etc. Not that it isn't important to a given moment, it is, uh, but an entire paragraph explaining how a bullet interacts and arcs under wind and gravity in minute detail, it can simply be shown in the anime as a character aiming slightly up and to the side while the wind is blowing and we can be on board without questions. That kind of stuff, you know? That was a bit more technical than approaching the joke side of it, but that was just an example. AGGO just lends itself much better to the visual medium, not just in its world, but also its jokes. But yeah, that's all the initial stuff I got to say on Alternative Gangale Online Season 2. If you're interested, Lens Squad merch is available on my Teespring page, link down below in the description. And if you made it this far, comment Welcome back, Pink Devil, down in the comments to let me know. I am very much looking forward to AGGO Season 2, and I hope you do too. As always, I'll be here with the Explained series the moment the first proper trailer drops, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss when that happens. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, stay cool.